So now that Microsoft Visual Studio Code is installed, I'm going to uh, open up my site uh, in the uh, in the workplace. I already have my week one, week three, and week two or four, etc. Will be coming in in uh, in the later days. I'm going to open up the index.html. Uh, this is showing me just the, the quick uh, website that we've created so far. That's just the about me. Uh, this is the one that's loaded up on my server. We are IDT. I also have another tab open, and this is actually showing me my local file. So this actual index file. I'm using uh, the Mac version just because it's running a little bit faster on my computer. Um, and uh, this was going to be how I'm going to be showing my progress as I'm changing the code. The uh, Visual Studio does have a what you see is what you get. Uh, and that will be, uh, I'll show you how to uh, put in that plugin in the next video. Right now, I'm just going to focus on adding the tags. One thing about this uh, code that that I put together, although I ran it through a website that uh, made it a little bit prettier, you can tell that it's got some tabs uh, set up. Uh, I can tell where paragraphs begin and end, where there there's an unordered list, where the list items are. Everything's kind of nice and tabulated. Uh, you can go one step beyond by clicking anywhere in the uh, code text and uh, do a Control A, Command A on that Mac will select all. That's one of those universal shortcuts. It means pretty much the same on every software. Once you have everything selected, right click on the text and tell the program to format the document. And by doing that, not only will you get uh, richer, deeper tabs, there's going to be additional spaces. Uh, it's uh, not breaking up the code really, but it's giving you a better idea of where things are. And this is going to play an important part when we start talking about semantic elements. Semantic elements are what's going to allow you to communicate with uh, your coworkers, with your team members, uh, what exactly the code stands for. Right now, I only have a body that's holding a heading, a couple of headings rather, uh, paragraphs, uh, there's an order list, etc. And at the bottom, I have that, uh, that badge. Uh, you really want to uh, make it so that your uh, website contains uh, similar elements. Uh, these are the uh, uh, most common elements that define a page. You have a header, you have a navigation space, you have sections, articles, the sides, and these really are all kind of interchangeable. For the purposes of this class, whenever I talk about a section, I'm talking about something that will contain articles. Uh, the asides will be sharing uh, the same space as sections and articles, but maybe inside a section. Uh, as you can tell, though, if you had an article that contained sections, there's nothing that's going to stop you. So once again, you want to uh, keep on using semantics to speak to your team members, your teammates, uh, and your future self, really, when you go back and you say, well, what, what, what did I mean by this in my page? This is going to help you out. Footer and header could, although they could be interchangeable, by all means, so I'll be using header on top by the head and footer at the foot of the page. Uh, we'll be doing in the next uh, assignments uh, some navigation uh, elements, and uh, those usually are embedded within the header, although not necessarily. These are basically just uh, have the function, the same function that divs had before and uh, still do. Uh, there's nothing that's stopping us from saying that we are going to have a div that has a class of header as opposed to have a header on its own. But all that being said, now that uh, that we've got those uh, semantic elements to work with, I'm going to start to add them. So, so I'll begin by um, making some quick decisions while in my page. I have this heading with my name, the About Me. I have uh, my picture. I have uh, the uh, text that tells you a little bit about myself. I do have this bullet list of uh, assignments and uh, you know more about me. Uh, I'll decide what to do with all this stuff uh, probably as we go on to the semester. In the meantime, though, I know that I want to create a header that has my name. I want to have a, some sort of a side element 
that has these links as a menu. I do want to keep my photo, but probably to the right as opposed to having all this space. And then at the bottom, I'd like to have a footer that maybe links to other things, uh, gives information about the copyright, etc., and uh, maybe has that badge included as well. So let me start by, first of all, finding the body beginning. I'm going to press space, uh, or rather enter a couple of times, and then uh, type in a header tag. I'll just do the open bracket header and uh, give it a class although I don't have a CSS file yet it will be coming soon so I say class is uh, going to be in quotes let's call it page header and I'm going to use page capital H header always one word I'm using a camel case so that it stays at one word but I can tell it's two with the capital H I'm going to close the uh, tag and uh, Visual Studio closes it for me by adding the header automatically. Now, I already have plans for this, so all I'm going to do is press space once, and that way I have the header open and closed. I want to have, at least for now, the uh, heading one in that space, so I'll select it, I'll cut it, and then come back to that space to paste it. And there's my h1 within the header uh, this if i were to save it and see it again and now let me do that i'm pressing uh, Control s to save uh, you can go to file save and uh, check out what it looks like on my local page i'll uh, reload nothing's changed because all i've done is added a semantic uh, tag if i were to look at the page source i can see that i now have a header class that contains my name but nothing's being affected because this class has not been defined in CSS yet. So I'll close that and return back to my editor. One thing for sure that I know I will have is that at the bottom I'm going to have a footer. So just before the body ends, I'm going to uh, press space or rather enter a couple of times and uh, type in a, a footer tag. Just open and close it and uh, give me a, a space in between by placing, pressing enter. And uh, uh, what I'm going to do for now is just grab this last few things, the more about me, and uh, just cut that from where it's already at and put it into where the footer is. I'm going to press, I can press control V or right click and paste. And the code will remain there. If I were to check it out, the page should still look the same because all I've done is added a footer. I haven't given it a uh, class. I can do that right now. I guess it's just going to be a class uh, and I'll call it page footer. Once again, using the uh, camel case so that I have those two words. Uh, one thing that I know I'm going to have is I'm going to have a uh, section that holds everything. I could use a main section, for example, if I go right after the header, I don't have a navigation plan just yet for this, so I'm going to open up a new uh, main tag, and there's one that tells me that it's going to close it. Uh, rather than copying and pasting all of this, I'm going to cut the main part of that tag, and then go just to where the footer begins. That way, the main section will close there. Now, the main is uh, contains everything in between except it doesn't have the header, it doesn't have the footer. Uh, at this point, I've been copying and pasting a whole bunch of stuff, so I'm going to control A to select everything, right click, and tell it to format. I guess format the selection. I could have also formatted the whole document, and then that way, uh, my main, my footer, all of the tags that I've added are also neatly stacked. I'm saving, pressing Control S, uh, and, uh, and seeing what this looks like on my, on my page. It should look the same, because once again, we have not really added any major codes. We have added some tags uh, that need to be defined still, and uh, 
that will happen in the next video when uh, I'm going to go to the W3 schools to uh, check out their uh, recommendations for uh, responsive page design and then that way we can have a, a stackable uh, selection of code that will appear correctly in this page uh, and by that I mean in this browser on a computer uh, but would also work uh, well in a mobile device.